we're on hey hey <laughs> how's it how's it going on this friday morning that's okay it's okay we're still here <laughs> still, still, still in shelter in place yeah thing. lockdown yeah getting kind of okay. used to it um yeah. don and i are taking like it's kind of cool we're um he calls it traveling so we're traveling to different parts of our neighborhoods like places that we would never go before because usually you know you just go to the same place and you're yeah so we've been like walking in places uh that we've never seen and seen some amazing architecture amazing that's a great idea i know it's so it's like it's like and i heard that's that's going to be kind of like the new kind because travel is changing obviously as everything is so it's going to be the new way that we travel it's it's locally so like discovering like your local community so yeah and what's really cool too is i've on my travels, our travels, I'm finding art everywhere. Like people are so kind. Like there is a, on one neighborhood, somebody wrote hope, there's hope. And it, it was a rainbow. And then there was a big sign that said, thank you to our essential workers. Wow. And then the other was like, um, it was national poetry month, you know, write a poem. And there was poems actually attached to the. That's poetry. awesome. And then, uh, the yesterday there was a lady, I, I guess it was a lady that wrote, um, be kind it's cool you know this shall pass so it's really i think locally creativity is just blossoming it's pretty amazing that's great how about you uh we're good over here we um are finding our yeah it's sort of like finding our new normal um <laughs> sort of just accepting that this is normal yeah and also that um not knowing is normal uh which in fact is true, was true before this. It's just that there's a bigger reminder of it that, uh, you know, you don't really have control and that you, you literally are living minute by minute. Um, but, um, so we are, we're just, we're in, um, we're in a good groove right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, the boys are, um, you know, sort of figuring out their school routine and I'm figuring out my, uh, what I, my, my, mom school teacher uh slash baker artist you know multiple uh roles routine so it's yeah cool that you um you started baking again and delivering i did and it's that been so break great it's been so fun yes the, com the community <laughs> my that is my uh four and a half year old telling me he's just gonna go get something okay um <laughs> so I think that, um, yeah, we're just, uh, it's good. Yes, I started delivering chocolate chip cookies around my city and a oh, lot cool. of people are grateful for it and are ordering and it feels good because baking is one of my uh, biggest um, art breaks that I take almost daily. Um, and it just feels good to share that with other people. Yeah, so, I had, I had a breakthrough too because over these last conversations on our podcast, I've been talking, I've been like in the freeze mode where a lot of people are and I yeah. started painting again. I, I saw like, that. I know, so it feels so good and I actually got clay and I'm sculpting again. So it's That's almost so cool. like it is, it's, yeah. So I feel like I've, um, I think what, you know, what happened when, I think it was like the breaking point when um, our Trump <laughs> told us to, you know, inject bleach into our, our things to yes. heal the virus i just i i had it you know what i mean because that like, was sort of was that your like you were psychotic break in a way that was my psychotic break where yeah. I, I crawled over the wall and i was like mm -hmm. i got i gotta create you know what i mean i gotta yeah. create yeah. and, and yeah. creation art as we know is a is a really beautiful way to um take control <laughs> yeah yeah to, i think Right. I think you're right. And I think that's a great way to start this. So this is a part three. I mean, we're just, this is just an ongoing question. Right. Because I think that it is an ongoing question and it will be a question for quite some time, which is what happens to art during times of crisis. And specifically, obviously, we're talking about coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so... Last week, we um, had a great session and we talked about um, some comments we had received uh, from artists and those who consider them art appreciators, art makers, uh, in their response to what they have personally um, been going through during this process and what they think the world will look like. And you and I mentioned 
that maybe we should start kind of uncovering these emotions that are happening, right? That's what I mean, you and I have been personally sharing our own emotional experiences with um, our COVID-19 and even just personal experiences and personal emotions. Right. And um, as not the nonprofit art is moving, how can we sort of um, help people deal with these emotions? And how can art be that tool of um, talking to your emotions or, um, you know, um, just getting to know them more? Um, and so you sent me this article. Um, have it in front of you? I don't have it in front of me, but maybe. I know. It was from the Huffington Post, and it was um, basically yeah. um, therapy has gone online. The article, I'll, we'll post it in the, in the yeah. below this thing. But it was saying that um, people are going through nine very strong emotions or um, scenarios. Yeah, and, it was like the top nine um, sort of, it's almost like emotional quotes. That's what it felt like. Um, and you know what? I related to all nine of them. I got it. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to tackle one of those, um, today. And it's that, that one, that this one really hits really hard. Um, and I'm, I might butcher it, but it's, I, what is it? I feel as though the whole world is anxious right now. That's, that, that's what, what, it, what it was. Yeah. 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 So yeah. let's talk about anxiety. Yeah. So I, as you know, I am a sociophobic. <laughs> I, I'm a lifelong, I've had it since I was a kid. So I know anxiety very well. I was in like seven years of therapy for it. And art ha was my tool to heal it. Um, so I know it very well. And what anxiety really is, is um, it's a thought process. It's where you get thought, your thoughts start controlling, you become obsessed with negative thoughts and scenarios. So it's not reality, real, really. It's like if you're thinking of the future and you're obsessing about, oh my God, what if, you know, what if my hands shake or, you know what I mean? Am I going to be judged? Or yeah. like for now, the anxiety for people I feel is like, what if I get sick? What if I get the virus? What if my mother gets the virus? You know what I mean? What if my kids get the virus? Or, um, you know, what, I don't know what's going to happen with the world, you know, or the economy or right? Or my life. So yeah, I think I, um, it's funny. I'm looking at the painting behind you right now. Yeah. It's what it is. It's this spiral of like, what ifs. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a spiral of a lot of things that you can't control. And so you can, you get, and, it, and a lot of it is the not knowing. Right. Yeah. And, and um, and then I, I think we also need to realize that we are, um, we are individuals, but we're also a collective, you know, the collective unconscious. So when yeah. you're anxious, you're actually tapping into the whole collective. So a yeah. lot of the anxiety that you might be feeling might not be yours. It mm. could be your neighbors. It could be your communities. It could be your country. You know what I mean? It could yeah. be the world. Right. So you, it's a lot of times I know from my own uh, experience with anxiety and being an empath of uh, being able to absorb people's emotions you're right. like all of a sudden you have to step away and you get you have to ask yourself is that my anxiety or is that the, the other person's anxiety so mm -hmm. really it's really like a severing of it because you can really it's it, it's even like you know um fear is another one that is what part of anxiety it's like is that my fear or is that the world's fear and so you really have to it's really a dance where you have to separate yourself from from the emotion and really i think it's really tapping into what's going on within yourself mm -hmm. right okay so on that heavy note <laughs> um, <laughs> which is um i think it's a good topic to talk about and i think we should keep talking about it um and uh if you know if this process um, helps us do anything. Maybe it'll get us to talk about um, mental health more than we yeah. have in the past um, and make people understand that they're not alone, um, that anxiety is something that, um, so here's two people sitting in front of each other and both of us have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and I think that's probably why both of us make art, uh, you know, is, is because um, at least I know that art helps me with um a very deep rooted anxiety of it um of just 
mine is more of a, um, I'm definitely a what if person. I'm a preparer, um, I'm a list writer, I'm a planner, and, um, and I think that um, I can sometimes, uh, I basically am the type of person that thinks of the worst thing that could possibly happen for any scenario. That's sort of where my anxiety um, comes in for me and it stems from being a perfectionist um, because I want everything to go perfectly. And so I, if I plan it, then it'll go perfectly. And then when it doesn't go perfectly, it's just this horrible, speaking of dance, it's this horrible dance to do with me, <laughs> the people around me. So that is something that um, sort of process art, especially kind of helps, um, I don't know, it's almost like it helps you meditate through that or um, who knows, you know, I don't really, I don't really know. I, I know what the science tells us, you know, and I know how I personally feel that I definitely feel better. Um, and then I learn something from myself every time I make art or every time I talk to someone about art. It doesn't even have to be my own. Um, yeah. See, I feel what art, yeah. what I feel um, what art does is it brings you back to the center of yourself. Because um, if we're talking about anxiety, that's out there. You know what I mean? It's out there. It's yeah. out there. It's like, what if? Oh my God. You know, worst case scenario. Yeah. But when you make art, even if you um, you have the mental chatter in your head while you're creating, at some yeah. point you go back into yourself. So it's a really a centering point. And yeah. I think it's because you're expressing, you're letting it out. Yeah. If you think about anxiety, that's just a big, it's in your head. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, right. it's going nowhere, right? Yes. And a lot of times. Right. Also, yeah. Yeah. Like art gives it a place to go. I love that. It yeah. lands. It, it mm -hmm. lands, but it also lands you within yourself where you can be like, oh, wait, you know, I'm, you remember who you really are, not who your mind is, you know, manufacturing. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Okay. So. Um, let's, let's share some ideas about how, like what kind of art breaks folks can take that are feeling, that are relating to that, to the fact that they're feeling anxious or that they feel like the whole world is sort of, um, experiencing an anxiety attack at the same time. Um, what, what can that person do, um, with art to, um, either understand that anxiety more or get more comfortable with the anxiety or process through that anxiety. Do you have an idea you want to share? Sure. I mean, for me, from my yes. own um, experience, what it, uh, you need to connect your mind and body. So um, create what, like a, you could create a, a circle and you can just do um, a purge. <laughs> you can just write out, what am I anxious about? Just let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. Or you could draw it, whatever that is. And then what I suggest is do, you know, you got to destroy it. <laughs> so you <laughs> let it out and either you rip it apart or you set it on fire. That's, okay. That's what's one way. And so what you're doing is you're connecting it. So you're doing something physical, either ripping it up or setting on fire that connects your mind and your body. I so see. Brings you back. It's kind of a, yeah. it's more of a, like a, uh, it's actually very fun. <laughs> because you, <laughs> you know, you let it out and then you're like, oh, I'm going to tear it up or I'm going to burn it. Yeah. And burning it is kind of cool because you can just see it kind of melt away, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, I would, so off that, that kind of, um, it makes me think of mandala drawing and this is for, folks who um you know um might are not anxious about drawing probably right so we'll we'll share things if you're anxious about drawing just fast forward a couple of seconds but <laughs> it's not necessarily anxious about drawing or wants to give this a try i would encourage you to try it no matter what but to sort of pick symbols that represent um kind of represent your anxiety you could do okay let's do two mandalas let's do one mandala that represents your anxiety Find symbols and colors that represent anxiety and focus on creating a mandala <clears throat> with those symbols and colors. And then get another piece of paper, or if you're making it with um, outside with nature or whatever, get, get another section of your yard and make a mandala about things that make you feel safe. Um, colors that ignite sort of this feeling of um, joy and happiness and safety um, and put them next to each other. 
and let those two mandalas have a conversation. And you can have a conversation right there with those two mandalas. Um, and um, I'm mentioning mandalas because mandalas are used quite a bit for processing anxiety and they have actually been proven to reduce, um, specifically reduce anxiety levels when you create mandalas. So, um, and I think it's in picking symbols that relate to you personally will be even more of a, of a heavy hitter and sort of that catharsis of what you were just talking about, which is like getting it from your head down to your heart and then out of your body, essentially. Yeah, and I developed a practice that actually incorporate essential oils into it, into my mandala making. So mm -hmm. it's called the harmonia practice. And that um, essential oils actually go to your limbic brain, which is your mammalian brain, your emotional brain. So that'll yeah. dive you deeper. The other thing that I should... Um, you should consider is asking your mandala your anxiety like what do you want from me mm -hmm. what do you want to do for me like most most times our anxiety develops when we're a kid and it develops because it wants to keep you safe yeah. so you know your anxiety why do you want to keep me safe kind of have that conversation with the mandala and dive deeper yeah. and really ask yeah why, I feel like, what, yeah. yeah anxiety I don't mean to interrupt you but anxiety feels a lot to me like anger I feel like Anxiety might be what introverts go to and, and anger might be what extroverts go to hmm. because they're both protecting you from fear. Oh. Like, uh, and, and like, yeah, because like anger is something that it is a defense mechanism. Anger actually is its own emotion, right? right. We all, it's this wall right. like blocking out. It's, it is a protective mechanism right. used for, by your subconscious to, to, keep, to keep people away. Um, and it's, and it's basically hiding fear and sadness. Those are the two things. And, and I feel like that's what anxiety is also doing. Um, but if you think of like an introvert and an extrovert, right? What's an extrovert going to do with their fear? They're going to be like, ah, 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 right? What's an introvert going to do? They're going to be like, oh. Well, I always, yeah, I always call it in, imploding on oneself. Hmm, that's what you're yeah. really doing. I mean, you're really like torturing yourself through the anxiety. It's true. It's a Yeah, no, lot. it's, Yeah. Yeah. You know, where you, like you said, ang uh, anger is like, ugh, destroy, you know what I mean? Destroy right. the other. Yeah, I see you destroy the outward instead of the inward. Yeah, yeah. it's really intense, man. Interesting. Wow. Okay, so okay. Um, another one to do, and this is, okay, this is the answer for people who, when I mentioned drawing their own mandala, were like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. um, grab a coloring page. Um, just, you could um, go buy a coloring book if you can, or um, if you have one at home. Um, or print something off um, uh, the computer, uh, just get, you know, Google free printable coloring page, because then your image is right there for you. And I, you know, and then you can just color in um, shapes and that will just the act of shading and coloring and things like that sort of will create, um, will, will almost, almost get you out of that constant cycle of um, thought process, that, that anxiety thought process. It'll, it'll give you a break from that. Um, and, it'll, and it'll create this calm, calming effect because coloring has been known to do that, sort of create this calming effect for you. And, and to expand on that, I would do, I would work with just color as color therapy, take a paint blue, you know what I mean? Calm colors and just kind of meditatively work with you don't even, you know, it, just brush it. You don't, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, just work with the color. And that's, I mean, that's science proven that right. color therapy really works and adjusts your thing. The idea yeah. that I have yeah. is um, draw in response to music. What I do in my workshops is I put on like different types of music. One is from the Lord of the Rings, you know, when good and evil are fighting. <laughs> and it's, so it's like, we're like, oh, oh, oh. so draw to that. And you're not thinking, you're drawing and dancing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you put on some beautiful music, maybe like Mozart. And then you put on um, like um, some pop music, like Michael Jackson. <laughs> and just really have fun with dancing and drawing you know, to the music, and then you have a conversation with it. I think that's the cool thing about art, is you can have a conversation with it. And yeah, so, yeah. but the beautiful thing is it comes from you, right? And then it's outside of you, and you can be like, hey, who are you? You know, what do you yeah. want? <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think that's the thing about this, is that these activities are, right, because 
anxiety isn't something that you can just be like, let me just tell you about my anxiety right now. I have all the words that I could, I could possibly use to describe it, right? Um, you don't. And, and art is that thing that it's a, it's a, it's a nonverbal communication that you can have, yes, with other people, but amazingly you can have with yourself, you know? And so you, you go through these process, you take these art breaks and you can, um, you're, you can tell yourself what you've been trying to tell yourself, but you just haven't had the words and now yeah. you have an image in front of you, you know? Yeah. And I would also, um, note and suggest make art like another art break is um check into your body and see where your anxiety like you could draw you know stick figure or you could draw yourself your body and then kind of figure out where that anxiety is locating your body mm -hmm. and then kind of like express it meaning release it express yeah. it kind of get it out of that out of that area because you know trauma emotions lodge themselves in parts of our body and that's where um you know it's yeah, and that's um, your exercise of connecting your brain to your body again because your brain would be like okay um you know anxiety i can feel you in my lower back and i'm gonna acknowledge that and i'm gonna you know kind of release you yeah what i think we're really talking about is a holistic um expression of art you know what i mean it's not just um I, yeah so this is interesting because that's what really an art break is it's not like drawing the, the bowl of fruit, you know what I mean? To make it look like it's Caravaggio or whatever, you know, right. it's, uh, it's really like, um, it's holistically having a conversation with yourself and trying to um, make yourself better or heal on some level. That's, that's what I think we're yeah. noting okay. when an art break is. Oh yeah, right? It's, um, well, yeah, take an art break, make the world better. Yeah, yeah, so I have a good, good one. So right. remember that um, that great, uh, I don't know if it's still going, Post Secret um, project yeah. where people Favorite. would send their secrets, very dark secrets, <laughs> to uh, this amazing uh, art project. So uh, my art break is design a postcard and write your secret on there and send it to Post Secret. Or you can destroy it if you don't want to send it. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> or you can <laughs> buried in your backyard. Oh, bury it. That's a, that's kind of a good process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe you could bury it with like a like a seed. Oh, or something. And that, that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful. Watch it idea. grow. Right? That's that's another art break is um, gardening. Grow oh, yeah. things. You know. Yeah. Grow things and you I could. Think um, you could you know get yourself some something that you can write on that's you know, not going to damage your garden and write, um, write a letter to your anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, writing is definitely one of those things that has been shown. Like when you write out your fears, you're actually sort of, again, you're releasing them, but you feel them less. The more you write out your fears, the less you feel them or the less intense they are for you. Writing has shown that. So, um, you know, maybe write your anxiety, you know, dear anxiety, uh, you know, write it a letter and um, plant, plant it in your garden um, with, um, I don't know if you have, if you happen to have any sort of um, seed with you or not, just plant it somewhere and see what, watch what happens and kind of reflect on that spot every once in a while. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like that one. Yeah. I know it can be like a representation of you growing or something. I don't, you know, it'd be cool. Yeah. Well, it's, it's also alchemy, right? I think we're talking about alchemy where you take the dark matter, prima materia, you work through it, you process. In alchemy, there's seven stages. So it's like there's burning, there's, <laughs> there's drowning, there's, you know, there's all these processes. Yeah. But in the end, it turns into gold, meaning your emotions turn into right. um, healthy ones. Um, ones yeah. that you know are joyful and manageable yeah. and higher. <laughs> the one that I thought was cool: um, capture your pain in chalk. So capture your anxiety. So you know, <clears throat> on a sidewalk, start writing your anxiety, what it is, and then blow it away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, the impermanence. The impermanence. Of life. Yeah. You spoke about when you were talking about how you were feeling. Like now we have to go day moment to moment, but be. I think we were living in the illusion that we weren't going from moment to moment. Right. You know I, mean? I think so too. I think that we are living 
in this idea that we actually have control. And this is a lovely reminder um, that, and, and, uh, and control is something that is a big deal to me. I call myself a recovering control freak. <laughs> Um, and I think then this has been for me personally has been a huge reminder that I have absolutely no control over anything. The only thing I have control over are my own emotions. It's my it's the choices I make of how I'm going to react to something. That is absolutely the only thing I have control over. Um, yeah, I can comp I can prepare for sure. I can definitely prepare for what's what's coming or what the future could possibly be. Um, and I wouldn't discourage that. Um, but I, I can only control my reactions. That's it, you know? Yeah, and I think that also, you know, this, this, this we're, we're talking about self-care right now in this art break. This is an ultimate yeah. epic self-care <laughs> um, <laughs> ritual on some level. Yeah. But um, when, as we know, when you meditate or when you work on yourself, you know what I mean? You do self-care activities, you actually um, become a better person, but in it you're you're um you're radiating that energy out into the world and you can make a bit bigger difference just by being better within yourself Does oh for sure yeah. oh yeah yeah no last time we were talking about our our ripple effect right, right. you right. know and, um do you want your do you want your ripple to be like you know um like a big huge storm that blows over everybody else's ship or do you want it to be this nice um calm ripple effect that adds, you know, um, positivity to everything that it touches, you know, um, and, uh, you know, if you, you know, if you want to make a positive impact in the world, the, the first place to start is within yourself. Um, because yeah. if, if you're not, um, if you're not in a genuine you know, space, I'm not saying you have to be happy or content <laughs> at all. <laughs> Um, but if you're not in a genuine space of self-awareness, it's very difficult to, um, to sort of give yourself, right, in a, in a positive way to the rest of the world. Yeah. Because um, you don't, you won't have the energy. Yeah. Um, it's just know. like, you know, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, you can see it if you go to the grocery store and you're anxious or pissed off right. because, oh my God, you know, my whole world has crash to the floor right. you're really going to affect that person you know oh, definitely I mean? in, yeah in yeah a very negative way so i can definitely see how this 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 um i feel like the entire world is anxious it's not the you know the quote wasn't i'm feeling anxious it was i feel like the entire world is feeling anxious and that's what you're talking about it's that it's that weird energy you feel every time you walk by someone right? Because you're thinking of so many things. You're like, do they think I'm too close to them? Are they too close to me? Um, you know, uh, I'm not, I, you know, I, how, how far am I supposed to stay with them? Is that far enough? Um, you know, I don't want them to feel like I'm too close, but also get away from me because you're too close to me. <laughs> it's just like Austin. <laughs> and so you're sending that like, you know, to them and they're doing the same thing to you and that's where it comes in, right? Yeah. You're, that's to be like, hi, but you're also like, you know. I know, God, it's so um, funny because, you know, as a, a latent social phobic, that's what you do. You see the person in your street and, and you divert. <laughs> so I'm really good at the social distancing. I'm an expert. <laughs> and Don is not. He's like, I'm like, Don, you, you know, you got to watch out for those people. And so right. I'm like, I'm over there. And he's like, he forgot about it, right? So it's right. yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that uh, people now know what social phobia is kind of like. <laughs> but, you know, even, it's funny because, right, it's it's like you see that person and you're like, are they going to move or am I going to move? Or Right, you know, yeah, and you're, and I don't, yeah, and then it's, it's like, and you don't, and, and so you're, and you're also trying to be like neighborly at the same time because you don't want that tense feeling. I don't want to feel tense and I don't want someone else to feel tense. Yeah. So it's this really weird and, and it's nonverbal, right? Yeah. A lot of this body language. And then I have um, my kids with me who are um, are aware of it, but I'm I'm not trying to pound it on their heads because I because they get nervous, you know. 
And so they're really good about it. And um, most people will, you know, will see them and then they'll cross the street because they realize that it's probably easier for them to do that than this woman who's pushing a stroller and trying to wrangle up two kids riding their bikes, you know, and they're very kind. But every once in a while, there'll be a corner and then someone will come, you know, and, then, <laughs> and you're just like, a, and then that's when you're in that freeze mode. And, it, and it, I have to laugh about it because, um, you know, it's, just, it's you, you, I guess I just have to laugh because if I don't laugh, then I'll cry and I don't feel like crying right now. So, you know, I got to find the funny stuff, right? Yeah, but you know what? I, I, did, I don't know if I shared this before, but yes, I did. It's really these people that are doing these public art breaks, like, you know, be, want, be it's cool to be kind or yeah. she'll pass, you know, this, she wrote this beautiful, I don't know, I thought it was a woman, beautiful calligraphy on the sidewalk. It's like, yeah. that's a beautiful art break too. And then, oh, another one I saw was, um, it was like, what, it was on a piece of paper. It was like a random act of kindness, you know? Oh, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was so cool. It was like, um, it was like three things. Um, make this a happy day. Look at a flower, you know, right. three prompts. And it was like, I, I mean, I love those. And I think yeah. everybody loves those. And I think when we are in this time of, anxiety social distancing you know what i mean i don't know you know it's like trying to navigate we're all trying to navigate right yeah. these little these art breaks you're actually making a huge difference in oh they're making a huge difference yeah masses of fresh air they're a reminder you know it's that reminder to separate your shoulder from your ears <laughs> Just, right relax your jaw you're probably clenching your jaw right now right and just like it's those little things that are really really helpful um, yeah that's that's what our, we're all about with our breaks right okay yeah. so I have this other one um, again this is for someone who might get a little bit more into their head when when um, Lisa or I suggest that they should draw <laughs> <laughs> so grab a piece of paper and put your pencil or crayon or marker or whatever in your non-dominant hand and basically just like let go a little bit and just scribble you know, I, if you have to set a timer, set a timer for 30 seconds and just blah, 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 go, go wild and then stop and kind of, and look at the paper and, and turn it in every direction that you need to until, until something kind of pops out at you and then, and, and go with your gut here. Don't think about it too much. Um, and, and it's, it's almost like the first, first image that pops up to you and, and kind of elaborate that a little bit. And then, and then further on have that, when you're, when you're finished with that, have that conversation with, with it, right? Cause that's, that is something that physically came out of your body and it's trying to necessarily tell you something, um, you know, and I'm not saying you're going to have like all the answers in the world or anything like that, but you're going to at least have started a conversation. Yeah. And I think um, what you're alluding to is it's kind of baby steps. If you're new to this, you know what I mean? If this is something that you've never done, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's like when you're dialoguing with art, it's like, it's like um, dialoguing with your dreams. You know what I mean? At yeah. first it seems like, I don't know what that meant. You know right. what I mean? But mm -hmm. when you start to um, dive deeper, you start, it starts to talk to you and you start to get the messages. So it becomes yes. deeper and it, it yeah. becomes actually really, really fun. Uh, I have a really simple one, um, you know, that goes back to childhood. Trace your hand on a piece of paper, right? And yeah. then just write or draw or color and just kind of get to know your hand. I always, <laughs> I always love to st stare at the palms of my hands. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're so interesting. Um, even do that. That's an art break. You know what I mean? And, and the cool thing is I always think of my hands, these are what you, this is what you create with, right? These are your tools. This is how you create. So this is um, how you manifest. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Okay. So then I have um, this sort of, for me, it goes into the realm of um, sort of getting you out of necessarily that cycle of worry, that cycle of ruminating kind of on your anxiety. Um, is to is to scroll through your images. I'm I'm saying scroll because I imagine most people have <laughs> their, <laughs> on their phones or their computers, um, or look through old photo albums um, if that's what you prefer. Um, but create a create an album for yourself of places that bring you joy and happiness and um, 
you know, make you feel safe or just make you feel good, you know, that sort of um, create your like sort of almost like a mood enhancer, you know, at the tip of your fingers. And so, you know, create that album in your phone or your computer or um, make copies of those photo albums and keep it close. And anytime you feel that you're getting to a low point or you're feeling um, anxious, look at that and kind of escape for a little bit and let your the back of your head do a little processing while the front end of your head is um, having some, you know, joyful memories. I like that. Um, I also, it also loops to me like this is my own process, but like, can you dream a bigger dream for your future or can you dream a better you for your future? So say if you're related by bad habits or things that you don't want in your life anymore, you know what I mean? That's emotional baggage. Maybe this is a beautiful time to release that and dream a, a, a better version of yourself. Or, yeah. you know, I think that's a really, that's, that's what I'm working on, trying to work on. But here's a really simple one is map out your heart. So draw your heart, a heart, and then kind of put it in sections and put it on what you love. Like, mm -hmm. I love chocolate chip cookies, you know, or yeah. I love whatever, you know. Yeah. So kind of map that out. So then you could also have that as an affirmation. Like, what do I, I love? like that? Yeah. 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 Yeah, just kind of create yourself like a goodie box of, um, I think that's why a lot of people create a gratitude journal because, um, you, you mean, you could start doing that. Just start writing down one thing every day that you're grateful for. And then, you know, maybe in a month you'll want to do two things a day. And, and you can, and it gives you something to look back on when you've had um, a bad day. You can look back and, and say, um, because we have a tendency to focus on the negative. It's a, it's a, it's a biological thing within us. Um, and it's, a, I also think it's a cultural thing within us. And so, um, when you have a bad day, it's hard to remember that, um, yesterday wasn't a bad day. And so maybe that, that gratitude journal or that heart, um, or that photo album will remind you that they're not all bad days. I have a question for you. So yeah. say, okay, you you know, this is what I've been doing. I, I get on Twitter and I just start scrolling and then you get all anxious because you're like, yeah. oh, this is another worst news day. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you get yourself out of that? What would be an art break to get people, you know, because I think that's what's going on right now too, is there's so much, so much that's happening. And if you just tap into the news, you'll have an anxiety attack. So what is yeah. an art break? That we so, um, right. So to, to sort of get yourself out of the, cause that's that, again, that, that's that spiral, right? Um, well, first of all, I would say if, if you're recognizing that you're a person that, that goes through that scroll of, you know, spiral scroll of negativity, <laughs> um, get stuck there. Um, and you've recognized that about yourself. I've definitely recognized that about myself. I would set a timer. Mm. Um, I would consciously set a timer uh, for yourself, um, or find an app that, um, sort of like, is like ding, 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 when you've been on your phone or for a certain amount of time that kind of reminds you to, cause that'll snap you out of that possibly, um, of, of doing that. Um, and then I would say that, um, to, yeah, so that's sort of like, um, you're a ball of anxiousness at that point. Right because you've you've looked at the news or you've looked at something that is making you feel that and your anxiety is coming up to sort of yeah as it's, it's bubbling at the surface like the news has sort of made it do that I would say that <clears throat> I think the first thing I would probably do would be to I would write it out or I would um I would talk to myself. I would, um, this would probably not work for everybody, but the, the, the thing that makes me think of right away is I would have a conversation with myself. I would turn on my video camera oh. my, and I would pretend that the person staring at me was my anxiety and oh. say, I would tell my anxiety, um, or I would just say it. I would be like, you know what? I just read this article and it said that the U.S. has over a million cases of COVID-19 right now and I'm freaking out because people are starting to open up, build, you know, open up jobs and 
Um, like I've been thinking about my mom a lot lately because she's in um, an industry that she's a dental hygienist right. and the dental hygienist. I'm like, no, thank you. If there is one job that <laughs> right. maybe we could just slow it down a little bit because her hands are literally <laughs> in someone else's mouth. Yeah. Take a couple steps back from that. So that gets me like, Ooh, right. So that's what I would say to my anxiety right now. I would be like, look, I don't think that, I think you're, you know, I think that people are moving too fast and it makes me nervous because it makes me think of my mom and I, you know, I haven't seen my mom. I was supposed to see her this summer and I don't get to see her this summer and I don't even know if I'm going to get to see her in December. And so you just kind of ramble, 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 ramble. It's almost like a stream of consciousness, um, you know, and then turn off the video camera and um, I don't know, go outside, find a sunny spot in your yard and close your eyes and stare up in the sun. If you, if you're lucky enough to have the sun shining at that moment and then go inside and watch it. The video? Yeah. And then get the perspective, the new perspective. Just, yeah. Try to, you know, and listen to yourself and really listen to yourself. Right. Cause at first you have to, you have to let go of any judgment. Right. Um, and let yourself really say what you're feeling. And then you have to be open to actually hearing yourself and what you actually said. You're being your own therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you don't, I mean, and I don't, that's definitely not going to work for everybody. Um, you know, uh, cause sitting in front of a camera is super intimidating. Um, yeah. so another process would, um, I would just, um, yeah, I think that you, I think this, to me, this feels like big, right? You need to do some sort of big movement if you're not going to like have this conversation. So if you have chalk, I think chalk would be like, go outside and just like, like think of one word that you're thinking of, right? And just ugh, write it as big as you possibly can. Find the biggest spot that you have and write that one word that you're yeah. feeling. Word anxiety, you know? Word anxiety. And then, and then just sit with it or, um, spray it with your water hose or erase it with your foot or turn it into something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Transformation. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what, like my, that's gutturally what I would do. And then I would like pragmatically take the steps to sort of be like, oh, maybe you shouldn't go to Twitter. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. So what I, I've, I'm nursing myself off Twitter, but what I do is I just, I paint or I create. So I, I shut the computer <laughs> and then right. I start creating. And yeah. so just the act of that makes me in a better space. Um, yeah. We should kind of end pretty soon because we're going yeah. on. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think one thing also, because we're all in our homes, is redecorate your room. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like move the furniture. Um, yeah. Think about your your house as a sacred space, as a beautiful, you know, tr beautification. I've been buying flowers a lot because I'm like, yeah. you know, it's you really it's it's your space, and you gotta make. Oh it. yeah, yeah. Oh, that reminds me of one I I really thought would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so this could be a quick one when you're when you're finding yourself on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Um, and and a quick change would be to go to Google or. Um, somewhere a search engine of some sort and um, think of something in your head that you think is beautiful uh, grand yeah. something that pops up in my head and go down what I would call a rabbit hole of beauty and and just look at something you think is beautiful so that might be a quick transition from scrolling through something that makes you anxious and then you're in the same you can be in the same space and you can slowly sort of get yourself out of the anxiety scrolling and maybe into the less anxious scrolling, you know, and just kind of absorb the beauty of something else for a while. And maybe that would be helpful in terms of uh, slowing your heartbeat down and just getting you in that more of a reflective mood um, instead of a um, sort of, I don't know, just jumpy, you know, like that. Yeah. And then you were talking about the archetype of the spiral, you know, people think they're spiraling down yeah. into anxiety. But I was reading something yesterday, and it said the spiral is the foundation of creation. That's how yeah. universes create themselves. That's how a flower right. creates itself. So it's like you need to recontext 
visualize the spiral that that's really growth so draw a spiral and you're not spiraling in you know what I mean <laughs> right into, yeah into it you're actually growing so yeah through the yeah. whole process that we're all in we're actually creating um a spiral and we're going to grow into new I love it the spiral is going out instead of in you're saying I like that right. yeah okay so I like these because like I, I hope these are helpful a lot of them are about like shifting your focus some of them are just um, communicating with yourself in a new way, you know, that nonverbal way, um, or maybe just when you can't find the words, the art will help you um, at least understand it a little bit more. I also think that these will, um, art breaks are always are known for being mood enhancers, right? And so that'll happen. And that might just kind of, even it may just get you out of it for just a little while. Um, and that's helpful. Um, yeah. So I think, um, I mean, I, we could go on and on. Right. <laughs> I know how long it's been. I have not been keeping uh, I'm not sure. It's going to be a long you know, podcast. I would say, um, you know, you know, anxiety as a whole is you feel like you're not in control. You're, as we said, it, your mind has overtaken yeah. everything. So when you make art, you're in control and you're creating. So for yeah. me, that's the foundation of it. You are in control. Your hand is control. You know what I mean? Your eyes yeah. are in control. So you're yeah. actually creating. And the whole thing is too, is uh, you look at the news or you look what's going on in the world. Um, you know, when you create, you are, um, you're creating your own reality, your own world, right? So that, you know, does that yeah. make sense? Like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole, that's another art break is that it's very similar to the finding the beauty and um, kind of that heart with the things you love is that, you know, you can get a piece of paper and um, just use it as a space, right? It's a container, a piece of paper can be a container and um, have it contain all the things that make you feel good. If even if you just write them down, you know, and, and create that new world for yourself that you can escape to every once in a while. You know, escaping is not a bad thing. You can escape every once in a while and then you come back with a new perspective or a new appreciation. You know? Yeah. See, I don't think it's escaping. I think it's manifesting. You know, I, I believe know. in manifestation. So yeah. if you really put your emotions and you want to feel joy, you want to feel love, you want to feel compassion, right. you want to, you know, give to the world, be in service. If you map make a map for yourself mm, yeah you know, and um yeah. that will manifest and that's really i love it the nature yeah. of breaks yeah awesome i mean honestly i feel less anxious <laughs> <laughs> me too it's wonderful yeah. to talk about anxiety right. so that's that's a gift talk about it All let's right. talk about it there you go yeah.